Sorry if you hear fireworks in the background. It is 1st through 9th of July, so... If you protest conservative speakers at college campuses, you're a piece of shit. Let's not bury that lead. It's not noble, it's not cute, it's not necessary, at least not the way you're doing it. They always defend it, like we're just exercising our free speech in contrast to their free speech. Eh, you're not though. You would be if you didn't block the entrances to the event, if you didn't occupy the back or in some cases front of the room and shout stupid chants interrupting the proceedings, if you didn't break out in violence and get yourselves arrested, if some of you didn't admit point blank to interviewers that you don't think think the Constitution is relevant, if some of you didn't verbatim say, we don't care, in regard to the free speech hypocrisy you were showing, if you didn't pass out weaponry to be used on people leaving the event, which was caught on camera. Antifa should just be called fa. It's an anti-fascist group of fascists. If you want to throw Molotovs at anyone who disagrees with you, I mean, what name would you choose? But obviously Antifa is not the majority of protesters at these events. So them aside, the remaining people are still not practicing their free speech by suppressing other people's free speech. Pulling the fire alarm during an event in an effort to shut it down is not free speech. It's not tolerance. It's not fucking heroic. They're smug. They want to be cute. I can almost see them smiling at each other in a meeting, like mischievous little pranksters saying, oh, we're gonna pull the fire alarm on Ben Shapiro's speech. What do you guys think? Oh, that's awesome. Fuck differing viewpoints. Try and shatter my bubble, will you? They're like tiny little imps and gnomes and goblins, tiptoeing around, causing annoyance in the name of tolerance, and costing their school hundreds of thousands of dollars on added security and accommodations in the process. This is our college! Let's bankrupt it! Yeah! Losers. These people go to college to continue their mental coddling, and maintain the intellectual capacity of small children who cry when they can't cheat at a board game. Grow your brain a little. Listen to an opposing viewpoint once in a while, you might actually expand that slim cranium of yours. A great example of this in my life is I watched a couple Ben Shapiro videos, okay a dozen, and while I only agree with him about 60% of the time, I always learn something about the viewpoints he expresses, and that makes me either add or re-examine the angles of some of my arguments. You know what's really easy to do? Winning an argument against a thesis statement. It's much harder to win one against the rest of that paper. People argue conclusions back and forth and get no Nowhere because they don't go deeper into their opposition's views, and even more importantly and eye-openingly, people don't argue with each other. They argue with themselves, where one side plays a half-assed version of the thing they're against, and the other side has the full support of the person in question. They have this inner dialogue, where one side of the argument is vastly more informed than the other because they've only researched or cared about their perspective, and so they dismiss the other side as wrong when they're really just subconsciously condemning their own ignorance. This is laziness, and this applies to everyone, whatever side of the spectrum you're on. I would boldly claim, and this is backed by nothing but a gut feeling and my personal understanding of humanity, that most people's political opinions are lazily formed. Whether you're a cashier or a politician, no group exemptions, the majority of people never go down the rabbit hole of their own beliefs. Because people argue tangents of political issues and then act like it's a case closed, when there are so many more aspects to debate. So Ben Shapiro is a conservative. He's an Orthodox Jew, and he's very against abortion across the board, and I watched a video of him at a college Q&A that probably had protesters outside the door, and he was debating a student over one aspect of the abortion argument, sentience. It involves the philosophical argument of what actually constitutes life, or at what point does the fetus become viable as a human and should then deserve to not be vacuumed out. Now, the video is called, like, Ben Shapiro totally owns ignorant liberal snowflake on abortion, or whatever. If you look on YouTube, there's tons of sensationalist titles like that by channels that are unaffiliated with any conservative personalities. They just hype it up for clicks, and the subjects of the video would probably disagree with the classification, and people in the comments are rightly calling it clickbait because the question askers typically hold themselves at a proper decorum and ask these questions respectfully. Sometimes they don't, but mostly they do. So Shapiro's argument is basically that liberals always draw these lines at what makes a person a person, but they don't hold up to scrutiny. Like if you say human value only exists at the heartbeat, what about adults who have pacemakers? If it's brain function, what about people in comas? If it's breathing, what about people who need machines to help them breathe? So the college kid was like, it's about sentience. And Shapiro's like, coma patients aren't sentient in the way that this guy's defining it is it okay if we just kill them? And the dude's like, well, that's different, because then you're like almost sentient. And Shapiro's like, you know what else is almost sentient is a fetus. 
And watching that made me agree with that particular outlook on that particular tangent of the larger abortion topic. I don't think you can argue that potential human life in the process of gestation doesn't have significance. He's not against birth control. You can prevent pregnancy, but you shouldn't prevent birth, is basically his bottom line. Now, the reason I can maintain my pro-abortion stance in the face of that is because I don't place particularly high value on any human life, much less a potential one. And when you give human rights to fetuses in the womb, it's a slippery slope, because it's not just abortion is murder at that point. It opens up a slew of legal problems, because you have to stay consistent across the board. If fetuses are granted basic human rights and labeled as people, then if abortion is murder, that makes miscarriage involuntary manslaughter. Women would have to be held responsible for gross negligence allowing a baby to attempt to live in an inhospitable uterus. It's like a landlord owning a building that someone moves into, but the building has an undisclosed mold problem, so the guy gets sick and eventually dies. Well, someone related to that guy is about to sue the shit out of that landlord, aren't they? And they'll want him brought up on charges, even if he didn't know there was a mold problem, he's culpable as the owner of the building. Not to mention, if the mother dies in childbirth, you're gonna have to slap some handcuffs on that newborn, cause that's involuntary manslaughter too, bitch! All right, that last part is a joke since there's no precedent for child murderers, but everything else is a legitimate concern. Every possible negative consequence of making abortion illegal is directed at women. They already get periods, and they already have to give birth electively sometimes. They suffer enough as is. Birth is suffering, whether elective or not. I mean, human women are designed like garbage for birth. It's kind of ridiculous. You can't pop out a baby until your vag is ten times wider than it should naturally be, and it takes up your whole day. We should really be looking into womb substitutes, where fetuses can grow up in a machine, like you take the fertilized egg out of the mother, so rest assured you still get to fuck to make it, and place it in an artificial womb that's portable. Then you can take it home with you and still read to it or whatever dumb shit you want to do. With this technology, if women are raped into pregnancy or get pregnant accidentally, rather than aborting it, they could do this very similar retrieval process and you'd end up with a baby you could put up for adoption rather than dead cells in a trash can, and I'm sure the conservatives would be on board with that. That's a win-win right there. Are we working on that already? We should be working on that already. I also think late-term abortions are some bullshit. If your water breaks while you're in the waiting room of the clinic, I think it's safe to say you waited too long. I do not mind late-term abortion restrictions at all. Like, how much hope are you gonna give your fetus before you decide to rip it all away? I'm pro-choice, not pro-delayed choice, not pro-indecision. It's a complex thing, but ultimately you know what's right for you, so I don't think letting people avoid it until it's too late is healthy for anyone's life. Another point I'm with Ben Shapiro on is the defense of a straight white male wanting a say in women's reproductive rights. Because if you view abortion as this immoral, horrific thing, you're damn well gonna speak out about it. And he uses this argument to where if he saw a woman torturing a dog, should he stay silent because he's not a woman and can't understand her? To that mindset, aborting a fetus is like drowning a newborn in a tub. So of course your orientation, gender, race, color, creed has nothing to do with trying to stop perceived immorality. Regardless of whether or not anything can be objectively described as immoral. I mentioned China's dog feet me festivals a few episodes ago where they torture and skin dogs alive in public for people's amusement. Should I have no problem with that if I'm not Chinese? Of course not. I'm gonna say that's fucking barbaric and it needs to end because I perceive it to be immoral. Straight white male is now a harmful classification. I'm just a guy. But because I'm a straight white male, I'm supposed to not have any helpful insight on any issues anymore, and my wants and needs are at the bottom of the pile. Basically, it's the Kickstarter of white people's comeuppance for slavery, and a lot of people on the left would be absolutely thrilled if we were persecuted for a change, so they're doing their part by trying to shut our viewpoints out of debates and writing us off as privileged assholes incapable of empathy or altered perspective. You don't need to walk a mile in someone's shoes to understand them. You just need to ask a few questions. But they don't want us to ask, because they've already decided we could never understand. As a result, any attempt to get out of the box they put us in is met with hostility and aggressive dismissal. It's not even a left versus right problem. These super far left people are more than happy to turn on anyone even slightly righter than they are for any perceived slight they make. You would think it was the result of generations of inbreeding, the way some of these kids need counseling 
feeling after hearing a viewpoint that disagrees with them, they shut down. They can't function. Somebody says if you work hard and get a job, you eventually won't be poor anymore, and they start hyperventilating. Chris, Chris, what's wrong? He said the Confederate flag might not be a symbol of racism to everyone. Then what does the counselor do? Pull out a beanbag chair and let him faint in it? Better call 911. Hello, I need an ambulance at UC Berkeley. Another student here has been challenged. The police are like, right away. How is that not pathetic? I'd love a good explanation for it that didn't involve painting the other side as all alt-right Nazis. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.